This is chapter 10, part 2. The only part I didn't count on, said Mullet Fingers, eyeing his bandaged arm, was getting bit. Roy said, I'm almost afraid to ask, but what happened to your snakes? Oh, they're fine, the boy reported. I came back and got them all, took them to a safe place and let them go free. But first he had to peel the tape off the, their mouths, said Beatrice, chuckling. Stop, Roy was completely exasperated. Hold on, right there. Mullet Fingers and Beatrice looked at him matter-of-factly. Roy's head was spinning with questions. These kids must be from another world. Would, would one of you please tell me, he begged, what's all this got to do with pancakes? Maybe I'm dense, but I really don't get it. Grimacing, the boy rubbed his bloated arm. It's simple, man, he said to Roy. They can't put a mother Paula's here for the same reason they can't have big old nasty Rottweilers running loose. Show him why, Beatrice said to her stepbrother. Okay, give me the hamburger. Roy handed the handed over the package. Mullet fingers peeled off the plastic wrapper and scooped out a handful of ground beef, which he carefully rolled into six perfect little meatballs. Follow me, he said, but try and be quiet. The boy led Roy to a hole in a grassy patch of ground. At the entrance of the hole, Mullet fingers placed two hamburger balls. Next, he walked to an identical look looking hole on the other side of the lot and left two more meatballs there. He followed the same ritual at yet another hole in a far corner of the property. Peeking into one of the dark tunnels, Roy asked, What's down there? In Montana, the only animals that dug holes like that were gophers and badgers, and Roy was positive there weren't many of those in Florida. Hush, the boy said. Roy trailed back to the bulldozer, where Beatrice remained perched on the blade, cleaning her eyeglasses. Well, she said to Roy, well, what? Mullet Fingers tapped him on the arm. Listen, Roy heard a sharp, short, short, high-pitched cuckoo. Then from across the open lot came another. Beatrice's stepbrother rose stealthily, stealthily, tugged off his new sneakers, and crept forward. Roy followed closely. The boy was grinning through his fever when he signaled for them to stop. Look, he pointed toward the first burrow. Wow, Roy said under his breath. There, standing by the hole and peering curiously at one of the meatballs, was the smallest owl he had ever seen. <clears throat> Mullet fingers chucked him gently on the on the shoulder. Okay, now do you get it? Yeah, said Roy. I get it. That's the end of chapter 10.